We are witnessing the dawn of a new industrial revolution, but this time it's digital. And the power required to fuel it is unlike anything the world has ever seen. And today I'm going to show you both what's coming and also, and more importantly, how to profit from it. I'll show you the stocks, the ETFs I hold in my personal retirement account to benefit from what I believe is going to be a huge opportunity over the next few years. Now, AI is no longer a niche tool. It is everywhere. It is embedded in search engines. When you do a Google search, you get an AI result at the top. It's in trading algorithms. It's in your smartphone. But behind that convenience, there is a silent emergency. The AI boom is consuming power faster than our electrical grid can possibly keep up. By 2028, in less than three years, data centers alone could devour between 6 and 12% of all American electricity, enough electricity to power 24 million homes. So we have taught machines to think, but we forgot about how to keep the lights on. Now, every single AI model, every image generation, every chatbot reply, it all burns electricity. So data centers are the new factories of this digital age. These massive, relentless, always-on machines. They're humming day and night, processing trillions and trillions of computations per second. The problem is we've built this infinite digital demand on top of a very finite, fragile physical grid, one that was never designed for this level of constant strain. In fact, most of our grid was built more than 50 years ago. And the experts agree, if there is any realistic way to meet AI's energy appetite, and I've been saying this for two years, it is nuclear power. But here's the catch when it comes to nuclear. A single modern reactor can generate about 8,000 gigawatt hours per year. So based on that math, we would need roughly 70 of these new nuclear plants just to power the growing demand for AI's workload. Yet despite this, and knowing what we need, the U.S. has only built two in the last 30 years. So the math is not adding up. And time, as I showed you, is not on our side. So while policymakers debate, while regulators stall, corporations are quietly escalating kind of an energy arms race. So companies are signing these massive billion dollar AI partnerships, every one of which demands more electricity, often than entire U.S. cities need. Here's a quick example. Oracle's deal with OpenAI is going to require 4.5 gigawatts of power. That's roughly the output of two Hoover dams. And all of that needed to power their chatbots and their neural networks. The, the power grid was just not built for this kind of competition, this kind of workload. It's, it, it's like plugging a rocket into a wall outlet. Analysts are warning that by 2026, by next year, that spare grid capacity across major U.S. regions will fall below safe reliability levels. And when that happens, we're going to see the same thing we always see in power crunches, blackouts and brownouts, and they won't be rare, they will be routine. AI cannot run 24-7, 365 when the grid itself is running on fumes. Imagine servers going dark mid-training, these big models freezing, data centers forced offline by these rolling power outages. And it's not science fiction. It's not doom and gloom. That is simply where the math leads us to our near-term future. Now, a lot of people are already seeing the strain in their electric bill. In the deregulated states, so Maryland, Connecticut, California, prices have surged 29% in just three years. California alone is up 70% since 2017, with residents now paying double the national average per kilowatt hour. Energy isn't just a line item anymore. It is a pressure point, a bottleneck, and as AI devours more and more of the grid, that cost is going to keep climbing. It is simply supply and demand. Demand is surging, supply is trickling higher. Now, right now, data centers use about 5% of America's total electricity, which to me is already an insane number. But according to McKinsey, that figure will more than double by 2030. Many AI and cloud infrastructure will account for 40% of all new energy demand in the decade. So we used to say that data is the new oil, but today energy is the new data. It is not just a resource. It is the choke point for all future progress. 
Now, by 2035, we look 10 years out, global AI data centers could consume an astonishing 1,600 terawatt hours per year. So if they were their own country, they'd rank fourth in the world for total electricity use, only behind China, the U.S., and India. So digital ambition has officially collided with physical limits. We are accelerating toward a future that our infrastructure simply cannot sustain at this point. And while America hesitates, others are moving fast. China already has 29 nuclear reactors under construction. The U.S., zero. So think about it like this. If AI is going to be the weapon of the 21st century, energy is the ammunition. Right now, China is stockpiling both. The smarter our machines become, the hungrier they get. Every prompt, every image, every training run consumes more energy than the last. AI absolutely will reshape the world, but only if the world can keep the lights on. We are in a race against our own creation. And if we lose, it won't be because AI destroyed us. It'll be because we ran out of power to feed it. So this is the story you don't hear about a lot. Silicon Valley is not really talking about it, even though they know how ugly the picture is. The question really isn't whether artificial intelligence will change the world. We all agree it will. The question is, will we have enough energy to keep it running? Now, I'm an optimist by nature, so of course we're going to talk about how can we, the average investor, trader, take advantage of this. There's a few ways. Now, the nuclear power stocks, and I've been talking about this for over a year, have been surging. If you look at some of these, OKLO, which has gone from 17 bucks in April to 190 LEU, Centris Energy, I've got the breakouts marked here. It's run from 50 to 450 This is in six months, folks. UEC has gone from 4 bucks to 16 SMR, New Scale Power, one of my favorites. I actually recommended this stock yesterday. Good night. It's up another 20% today. I mean, this was a, a $3 stock a year and a half ago. It is up, what does this make? 2,500% in two years. So the writing is on the wall of the nuclear stocks. Now, some of them are going to get overpriced. Uh, I What I do in my retirement account, I generally strict, uh, stick to ETFs, exchange-traded funds, as a way to allocate dollars to an entire area without making big bets on a single stock. So uh, there is no question we are in an energy crisis. There is no question we're going to be pulling uh, more energy from these alternative sources. This is NLR, the Vanek Uranium and Nuclear ETF. It holds all those stocks I just showed you. It owns uranium miners. I've got a chunk of my money put into NLR, just a bet on a nuclear future. In addition, I've also hedged this with another alternative energy, which is solar. This is T-A-N. This is the solar ETF. Same as the other. Holds a basket of solar energy stocks. You'll have to try to pick the best one. You're just betting on the move. And look, the whole sector has done well. I mean, just in the last six months, this sucker has just about doubled. Um, but solar, I, I think what we're going to see is they're, we're, the government and, and private industry is going to throw the kitchen sink at the power thing. Sure, they're going to ramp up traditional production. Sure, they're going to get into big nuclear plants and small modular reactors. They're also going to throw solar in there. They're going to take power from wherever they can get it. Uh, and solar really is, is in, a, in a really pretty nice buy point if you're looking long term. Let's go to a weekly chart. I mean, we saw uh, the big ramp up here in 2020. Solar has been pretty much in decline. This is, I find, is so ironic because there is nothing but government subsidies to put in solar and trying to encourage the taxpayer. And all that did was tank these stocks. Meanwhile, as soon as they ended all of these incentives, these tax incentives, solar has doubled. So kind of funny. You know, here's your lesson, DC. Let the free market work. But if we look at this thing, you can see what I'm what I'm what I'm viewing here. It's kind of been in this almost two year low shallowing base here. It's kind of come in. It's tightening up and looks as though it is it is ready to accelerate higher. So that's the money in TAN. In addition, if you really want to just throw the put a blanket on this, you can just buy the entire utility sector. Now, the bulk of these stocks are not going to be alternative energy. It's going to be more traditional. Uh, utility providers, your power company here, it's Alabama Power. I don't know what you guys have there. Um, but, I mean, even here, we're, we're, we're seeing the big run, right? Over the last 
uh, two years up 50% or so. Nice, strong uptrend. And, you know, all things being equal, this is going to trend higher as a company, as a, a country continues to consume uh, more power. But I think this thing could really go parabolic uh, in the coming years. So if you want some exposure there, sure, you can invest in these particular stocks. We've had our biggest wins pretty much ever out of these nuclear stocks uh, this year. I mean, they have just made these historic runs in like all of them. Not like, oh, this stock was good. If only, I mean, just massive, massive runs here. Uh, we're seeing quantum computing really ramp up. And this is also related to uh, the AI boom and some other stuff. But uh, those are really the big, the big three, in my opinion, if you want to play it kind of safe. Uh, XLU, again, the, the utilities ETF, it's not going to double your money in a month, but it's a good place to allocate some funds. NLR, the nuclear ETF, I mean, it is rocking. You might say, Ross, looks pretty high. Well, it's at 160. When it goes to 260, you probably won't think that. And then TAN is the, the solar ETF. Uh, there is also a, just a general clean energy ETF. I think it is iClean. That's it. I-C-L-N, uh, Global clean energy. This is probably going to have solar. It's going to have nuclear and wind and all that stuff in there. So I've got pretty decent exposure in this space uh, on top of the gold, uh, on top of the gold miners. Uh, I still hold my silver. I'm still holding the the, the silver miners and, and the other stuff I talked about based on inflationary trades. But I just wanted to put this in front of you. Obviously, it's not investing advice. Consult your financial professional. I don't know your risk tolerance, your age, your net worth, your goals, any of that stuff. Uh, but I just wanted to share what I'm seeing because I believe those who are underexposed to energy for all the reasons we've talked about are going to miss out on what could be some really big gains in the coming years. And if you haven't already... Click that subscribe button down there in the corner. That way you won't miss these updates and they will show up in your YouTube feed going forward.